Hello everyone and welcome to this video about PM25. In the previous videos we have seen it in action already but we don't know anything about it so I thought it would be nice to know a little bit about how BM25 works. So BM25 is one of the most widely used ranking algorithms in information retrieval and you will find BM25 at the core of many search engines and even systems with retrieval augmented generation or RAG. So like for hybrid search, uh, BM25 is still used. Uh, that's the hybrid part uh, with, uh, with vector search. And at high level, BM25 answers a simple question. How relevant is a document to a given query? So let's get started. I've seen many tutorials around BM25, but it's not so complicated. So let's not get too confused and let's just dive right into it. So in the previous videos, we built a very simple basic search engine, um, which which had like this text field and the URL field, uh, which looked something like this. The UI has changed a bit now, but it's still the same thing. So if you search for Python web framework, um, BM25 says how many times do these words appear in each document? Are they rare or common across the whole collection? Are we looking at a short focus document or a huge blob of text, like huge amount of text? So BM25 considers these three factors when ranking the documents. First is how many times the query word appear in a document. More occurrences they always suggest stronger relevance. Second thing is how rare. So rare words are more, more meaningful and boost the score more. And the third one is the document length. Extremely long documents can artificially match many terms. So BM25 slightly penalizes long documents. So together, these factors, they prevent large documents you know from dominating and rewards of more focused relevant matches so here we see like you have this query and it says okay how relevant this document is to the query so to summarize more matches uh, implies a higher score. If a query contains rare terms, documents containing them will get larger boost because finding rare information is more valuable. And long documents, they get very long documents, they get a slight penalty. So they don't dominate by just being huge. So BM25, it balances these effects to produce realistic search relevance. Now let's let's take a look at the formula for BM25. It's it's not too complicated, and uh, it might look scary, but it's really very simple. So it says like BM25 for a given document D and a query Q, which is the capital Q, and it can the query can contain n terms. You can call them words, or you can call them terms or tokens. So it consists of three different parts. One is the term frequency part, which is f of q i d. And one is the inverse document frequency part, idf part. And one is the length normalization, which comes here, field length divided by average field length. So term frequency part says how often a term t, which is the token t in a given query, appears in the particular document. IDF part says how rare is T across all the documents and length normalization, how long is this document, this given document compared to the average length of all the documents in the corpus. So the parameters here uh, are only two. You have seen like, you have seen term frequency and uh, inverse document frequency in TFIDF. So, I don't want to go there. If you want to read about TFIDF, I mean, it's just this formula over here. It's uh, not very difficult. 
um so inverse document frequency says how rare the query term i is across all documents um term frequency how many times a term appears in a given document d then you have two different parameters here one is k1 and another is b so and these parameters they control um bm25 let's say the bm25 score so k1 controls how much we reward the term frequency and b1 b controls how strongly we normalize by document length so for k1 if you have a low value of k1 just seeing the term once is going to be enough repeats are not going to help more and if you have a high k1 then repeating the term will boost the score more and as for b since it's multiplied by field length by average field length which is the length of the document d divided by the average document length so b controls how we normalize this uh, norm normalize by the length of the document given document so if b is zero you will completely ignore the length of the document and if b is one you fully normalize by length so long documents are penalized more and the typical value for b is anywhere between 0.7 to 0.9 but you can you can experiment with any value you want and see how it changes your search results so the most important thing here is bm25 saturates if a term appears like 50 times versus 10 times it doesn't get five times the score so there are diminishing returns and let's see how we can we can do it in vespa so here is a simple schema example so all you need to do is when you're in, uh, when, when you're you have these different fields so um you can just write index and enable bm25 then in the first phase expression or function we did function in the previous one you can just write bm25 content so you created this content field which is a string and you're indexing it including it in the summary and you're saying index enable bm35 that's all you need to do and similarly like uh, in in the pi vespa thing that we did uh, uh we created index enable bm25 then in the rank profile we defined this expression bm25 of text plus 0.1 into bm25 of url so today let's see it a little bit more in action let's see how we can adjust the parameters k1 and b and how it changes the our search results so in the previous video we have already seen this application we created this application package in vespa called simple search and uh, in the in the last few days uh, i was wondering uh, we uh, we have only 100000 samples so i added 4 million samples and we we are going to search on those 4 million samples today so one thing i did is i created a deploy underscore app dot pi where i can redeploy the application without losing any data and i can add new rank profiles so here the things that have changed is adding enable bm25 to the url field and we have multiple rank profiles so the first rank profile is bm25 text only where we take bm25 only on the text field the next one is similar and it's only for the url the third one is the same as the uh, one we have seen in the previous video it's bm25 of text plus 10 percent or 0 0.1 multiplied by bm25 of url and the fourth one in the fourth one what we do is we play around with the parameters so it's it's the same as third one but we define a new argument called rank properties and we say bm25 text dot k1 has a value of 1.8 i'm i'm putting any arbitrary value here just to see if anything changes and bm25 text 
parameter b is 0 0.4 for url k1 is 0 0.9 and uh, for uh, url b is um, 0 0.3 so you can play around with these parameters and then what i do is i deploy the application there is one more function you can s send the package to files and then here you can see like the vespa application and the schema and if everything is correct you will see like there is no mistake in the schema so uh, here we have the document doc uh, id field text field url field bm25 is enabled indexing is index and summary i've explained this in the previous video and you have the field set and then these four different rank profiles. I have also vibe coded the UI and we are going to see like how these uh, four different rank profiles change um, the search results. So let's start the UI here. Okay, so the UI is running. Let's go see the UI now. So this is the UI you have previously seen. Actually, you have seen something different, but then people were complaining like I made the UI using wipe coding. So I used wipe coding to make the UI not look like it has been wipe coded, but it is still wipe coded using codecs. You can find the code for everything that we are discussing in all these videos in the repo that I'm going to share in the description. So now we have four, just above four million documents. Uh, let's try searching for Chicago deep dish pizza. And we have four different rank profiles. So it's BM25 text plus URL default. Then we have the text only. We have the URL only and combined and tuned. So if I take a look at the uh, BM25 text plus URL default, let's see the search results. So we have some deep dish stuff in the URL, Chicago, we have uh, the great Chicago deep dish pizza. The second one is uh, more like everything is in the URL. Uh, yeah, so we do have relevant results. So does anything change if I do text only. So we can see these four top four search results that we have here. And you can see how fast it is. It's like five milliseconds or less. And we search only for text field. And I, th I think it has changed, right? The second search result, I'll have to go back. Yeah, so see how our search results has changed because now the focus is only on the text field. So what happens if I change the focus only to the URL field now? I am hoping that the first one will disappear. Let's see. Yeah, and I was right. So the first one has disappeared. So now the this result URL consists of Chicago Deep Dish Pizza, everything in the URL, and uh, we hit it as of our first result. And what happens like if we uh, compare the default one. So in the default one, we have uh, these different results and the fine tuned one. I mean, you can play around with the parameters and see what's better for your use case. Uh, let's try this one. And I think, I think the results have changed again. Uh, it's first, second, third, and fourth, so it's Cleverwood, and next up with J, and if I see the tuned one, um, yeah, okay, so the third one is now something else. So given your parameters, it has changed the search results. So we took a look at how BM25 only on text works, how it works only on the URL, how it works on combined, and how you can tune the different parameters K1 and B to uh, fine tune your search results. And we learned how BM25 actually works and what the formula stands for. So 
If you like this video, do like, subscribe, share the video with your friends and family members and uh, keep keep watching the series. There's a lot more to come in the next ones. We are going to discuss how to uh, create uh, much more advanced queries using Vespa. And uh, we are going to build this into a fully fledged search engine. Maybe I'll uh, increase the number of index documents to 10 million. I don't know. Who knows? But by the end of the series, you will have a fully functional rag with embedding, hybrid search and whatnot, everything that you can imagine. And if you have any feature request, uh, you can create an issue in the GitHub repo that I'm going to share. So thank you so much for watching this video and see you in the next one.